Hey, hey, and welcome back to another learning Java 2D game programming video. So in our last video, we made persistent high scores. So we now save our high scores to a file and we can see them when we when we get to the score state, which currently we do that when we exit the game state. So there was one sick person. I think I saw someone over here. There's one. Yay. All right, so I got a score of 500. Let's exit here. So I'm just going to say finished. And here you go. Here is the high score that we made. So these have some high scores that I made a few days ago and a few that I just tried. So I'll also do note that you can format this however you want. Different countries have very different ways of writing dates and time. I know that. I know, for example, that Americans don't usually put year, month, day. I think they put maybe year, day, month. Not sure. But we do it this way in Sweden, as well as we use the 24-hour system. So this is how I would do it. But you can, of course, look up how you'd like to format it for yourself. But anyway, there was the list. So what I was thinking that we would be doing today is we will be saving and loading maps and we can decide what file name it's going to have. So we're going to use a file chooser and we're going to use the one from the swing package. So at first I thought it would be fun to sort of make our own UI to navigate the file system, but then that would just take a lot of time and I don't think it would be that much fun. So let's not when there's a simple component that we can use. Let's use it. So I'm going to pop over to my state editor UI and the UI button menu, because this is where we save and load. This is where we have these buttons. And inside of here, I'm going to define a J file chooser. So J I'm just going to call it file chooser. So that's from the swing package. Let's instantiate it. So a new J file chooser and it needs nothing. Let's do some setup work. For example, I'm going to say set accept all file filter used. I'm going to set that to false. And then I'm, we're going to add a file filter. So set file filter, new file name extension filter. This takes two, uh, or well, it takes one description and then as many extensions as you'd like to go along with that description. So I'm going to call the description isobubbler map and the extension is an ism. So that would be it. I'm not sure if there's something else. Is there something else? I'm just going to quickly check. I think we're good. No, actually, yes, I want to set current directory. That's what I want to do. So I want this to start well where we should be. So this takes a file. So let's just create a new file and we want to find the path to where we are right now. And we've done that plenty. So by say using the class and getting the resource from the class, which means it finds where this class is on the file system and then gets the resource from that there. And then we need to say get file. So now it should start in the directory of this class, but though it will start in the directory of this class when it's been compiled. So it's going to be in our out folder, but so that's good. Now, instead of saying state save game map and state load game map, I'm going to say this dot save map or this colon colon, you know, method reference. So let's create a method like that in here. And what this is going to do. So it's very easy to open a save dialog, show save dialog. This needs a component that is the parent. And we don't have a swing component in here. So I'm just going to say new J frame. And that's going to work well. So it uses the component in here as a parent to find out uh, what style the parent is. So the dialogue can take on the same look and feel as the parent. 
but we're I'm not gonna concern myself with that right now. So that's gonna do just fine. And this is actually gonna return an int. So control alt V will give us well we'll write this part of the code automatically. And I'm gonna say file chosen. And then let's make an if statement. So if file chosen is equal to j file chooser dot approve option. So that is this file cho chooser is saying that this is an okay file. This file exists and it's fine. Go ahead and use it. Then we want to load it. So now we have to say state or sorry, we are saving. Of course, we want to save it. So now we say state save game map. But now let's modify this to take in the file path. So I'm going to say file chosen. Whoops, sorry. I'm going to say file chooser get selected file. And I'm just going to say to string probably. So we're getting the file path in a string format. And then when we're in here, we need to take that file path in. Game map set scenery list, that's fine. When we do save game map, we now have to tell it where to save that game map to. So let's go into this method and change it. I'm gonna do it like that. Now we are choosing the exact location, so we don't need to do any of this anymore. And the fact is, we don't need to do this either because the game map is a persistible, right? So let's just pass it on to our persistible IO save map at this file path. Great. So while we're in here, let's do the load one as well. So I'm going to do, we're taking in the sprite library and now we're also taking in the file path. And I'm going to start by doing just none of this. Let's just rewrite it. So let's use our persistible IO. I'm going to say load. It will be of class game map. It will be at file path. And we need to save that to a game map like so. So what we want to do now is game map dot reload graphics using this sprite library. And then we need to return it. So that was it. Just gonna, oh, that's gonna be fine. All right. So actually let's move on to the state first. So here you go. Game map, game map load sprite library. And now we pass in the file path, which we are going to take in here. And then game objects of the state, we load all of the scenery list. But uh, if we already had a map opened, the game objects will already have a lot of objects inside. And now we're just adding more objects from the map that we're loading. So we need to remember to clear the objects that we have before we load the new ones. So that's that. Now let's go back into the UI button menu and say this colon colon load map and create that method. And just like under here, let's do file chosen, file chooser, show open dialog, new J frame. And then I'm going to say if file chosen equals J file chooser approve option, then state dot load game map at the file chooser dot get file, no, get selected file and get path. So that should be it, but I'm guessing we have a couple of sad states now that are trying to use the load game map method. So now this needs a file path. Um, so let's just start at this base folder like we usually do. And then let's tag on maps and then map.ism. So this is our default map and get file. I'm just going to copy this and put this in the other state. So the editor state is fine. The game state, let's change that. We did the menu state. Let's do the score state as well. 
So hopefully when we run now, everything's going to be fine. And right now it's going to look like before, hopefully. And it does. So that's great. Now, if we go into the editor and press load. So there you go. This is the J file chooser open dialog. And we only look at files of type isobubble or map. So right now it's only going to show you ism maps. If we go in anywhere else, like sprites and look inside of here of Dave, it's empty. But if we go back up and go into maps, then you're going to see map ism. So the isobubbler map um, file filter is on. And let's just open that. And it opens just like before. So I guess that's great. Yeah. I guess that's it. I'm just going to spend some time to make a couple of different maps to use for our different states so we don't always look at this one. But I'm going to start by doing this. So I made two new maps. So I'm thinking about using one in the menu state. So I called it menu and the other in the score state. So I called it score. All right. There's one more thing that I'd like in the score state. So in this state, let's see da, 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 score state. There we go. We were in there. All right. Uh, in here. I want the camera to always be centered. So I'm going to make the camera always centered. Let's override the updates. And let's remember to call super. Right, sorry, we're inside a state. So this doesn't take a state, it takes a game. All right. There we go. Now let's find what position the camera should have. So let's start with half of, well, a position that is at the center of our game map. So And now that we have, of course, we need to divide it by, uh, by two. Now that we have the centered position, let's remove half of the size of our camera or our view, basically. So There we go. And now we just need to give the camera this position. All right. So let's see what all of this looks like. So here you can see my new menu game. Maybe I want to move this tree a little and see the good thing is we can do that whenever we want. Now I just need to find it. And I put my maps in the resources folder in our project, basically. So not in the compiled version, not in the out folder, but in the regular resources folder so that they won't disappear. So I'm just going to get the menu ism and this one looks a little weird. So it's loading. There we go. Just going to move that in a little and then I'm going to overwrite that. So let's go back. And a 
apparently it didn't reload it. Well, of course, because it looks at the map that's in our generated folder. So if we just restart that, then our map is going to be copied from the resources folder to the out folder, and then it's going to find it. So this is sort of a quick little menu map, so we don't have to stare at this map all day long. And now if we go to our score state, we have this little pool of water. And if you increase the size, then the pool should still be at the center. And it is. So I'm happy about that. That will be all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Hey, do